It is therefore ordered and adjudged that the said Donald John Trump be, and he is hereby, acquitted of the charges in said articles. On February 5th, 2020, the United States Senate voted on whether or not President Trump would be removed from office on his two charges of impeachment. The Senate voted to acquit, meaning that President Trump will remain in office. This vote was the culmination of months-long impeachment proceedings about Trump's charges of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Evidence of Trump's actions was presented to the House of Representatives, which voted to impeach President Trump. However, after the Senate conducted a trial, it declared him not guilty on both charges. We visited UVA's Center for Politics to talk to J. Miles Coleman, the associate editor of Larry Sabato's Crystal Ball, about his insights into this process and its potential impact on the future of American politics. So the House, because the Democrats control the chamber, when the articles of impeachment that they ultimately drafted were brought to the floor, it was, other than two Democrats, it was more or less a straight party vote. And I think that the vote in the House was very telling because all of the Republicans stuck with Trump, even the ones who were retiring, who don't even have to deal with the consequences electorally, they all stuck with Trump. There was a good uh, tweet the other, the other day by uh, one of the authors, John, John Meacham, who, uh, who's kind of known for his uh, biography of Andrew Jackson. Uh, he said, well, Trump is effectively a monarch because, because his party is going to stick with him no matter what. And I see this, uh, this polarization we have it isn't, shows no signs of really going away. So I think in future impeachment trials, I think, okay, if, you're, if your party stands with you and if, and if they're in the majority of at least one chamber, okay, well, then you're probably good to go. According to Mr. Coleman, the impeachment trials are representative of the current polarization of American politics. If you've followed politics in Washington, D.C. for the, the past, really at least since the 90s with uh, Newt Gingrich, there's been this growing tribalism there. And I think, you know, impeachment more than anything else is kind of a natural extension of that. So, you know, I think... It really reflects the nationalization of where we are as a country, the, the polar is this a station, uh, a perfect, uh, really a perfect example of that was last night in the State of the Union where Paul Pelosi tears up the speech. Many theorize that congressional Democrats pushed the trial as close to the 2020 election as possible in an attempt to weaken President Trump's chances of re-election. However, Coleman believes that the impeachment will not affect his chances of re-election like the Democratic Party had hoped. So, uh, overall, I don't think the fallout is going to be that huge because if, uh, if people remember, like, about this time last year, we had a pretty major government uh, shut shutdown. And that was supposed to be very damaging to Trump. Who talks about it now? It's like, <laughs> so I think uh, what really plays into this is that the uh, American electorate collectively has a very short memory. Uh, so kind of as we were saying, uh, this election in some of these key states, we're going to be closely fought regardless. While the impeachment may not affect the coming election, the proceedings speak to a divided Congress, a potential lack of accountability within the American electorate, and furthermore sets a significant precedent for the bounds of executive power. I'm Mia Galtieri for WUVA News.